So I'm going to create a new canvas. I just, you know, set it to A4 typically. It's a good DPI and a good general size, and I can always change it later if I want to. And then we create. So, you know, these are the layers, which is these double stacked uh, squares on the bottom right. I'll go into them more in a bit. And I usually use the bottom most uh, layer for sketching with. So another important thing is that all your tools are going to be up here. If you use an Android, I think on uh, Apple products, it's just only the top left and then you press it to, you know, go up and down the tools you want. Uh, if you want pressure sensitivity, you click on these double bars on the bottom left. You go to settings and you can turn on uh, pressure sensitivity here. Uh, even if you don't have a pen, some screens do have pressure sensitivity depending on how hard you push down on the screens. Um, I'm going to turn on palm rejection as well. And I'm also going to turn off, I don't know if I want to turn off the long press eyedropper yet, but it basically means if you hold your finger or your pen down on the screen for long enough, it's going to pick up whatever color you hover over. But that's not important right now. So on this bar on the left here, if you click on that, you can either get like a color palette or you can get kind of a mixing tray. Um, what's important are these two circles on the left. Uh, one of them controls size, which you can just control by going up and down, hold, clicking on it and then holding it and then going up or down to get the desired size you want or left and right. Um, I'm going to go with maybe this big. And then this bottom circle controls the opacity. So, you know, this is the most opaque so it comes out clear. And then the less opaque you make it, you know, less clear. So I'm going to go ahead and also if you, wait, this one? No. Ah, yes, there it is. So if you click on this palette, you can also change the type of pen you're using. Sorry, I'm not used to the Android uh, one as often, but it, it's pretty simple to get the hang of after a while. So I'm just going to draw a silly little thing. Like that. Okay, so now that we got what we want, we can go back to these layers here. And when I click on it, there's going to be an edit button in the top right. And that will give me an opacity setting all the way at the bottom. And it lets me lighten the line so that it's a little easier to line over. And because I don't need all this extra space, I'm going to go ahead and go to the selection tool up here. And make a square around, you know, the area I want to close off. Go down here and press crop. Okay, so what I can do is go to layer 4 here. And the way that layers work is that uh, pretend that you've got like a bunch of um, transparent sheets of paper with different like markings on them. Depending it, on the order that you put the sheets on in, that's what's going to show up before, you know, whatever is underneath it. So if you take whatever's on the bottom most uh, sheet and you move it to the top, that's what's going to show up on top of everything else. So what I'm going to do is use my pen again, and we're going to turn that to black. And if you, if you don't feel confident in your lines, that's okay. This stuff can be finicky. There's at least a correction. Um, tool in the top right left here and it'll help smoothen out your lines a little bit and you don't have to feel so bad for it anymore. I'm not following my sketch exactly, I'm just trying to do a really quick how-to video. Ah, uh, these, these nice round bezels on the phone. Okay, almost done.
All right. So now that we don't need the sketch anymore, we can go all the way down here. And we don't need to delete it. All we need to do is press this little eyeball icon, and it's going to turn it off for us. So what we want to do is go back to the line art. And we're going to scroll over to this one. This is called the Magic Wand tool. And I want to put an expansion about of about two pixels. So that's what, what it's going to do when I do that, is that it's going to, um, instead of just selecting on the outside of these lines, it's going to overlap the lines a little bit so that uh, when I fill this in, it doesn't. the color is not going to um, stick outside of the lines. So what I want to do is I actually want to set any of these to layer, and I'm going to select outside of this. So anything that's in the blue is what's not selected, but I actually want to go back to here, and then inverse selection, and then we're going to go to layer 2, and we're going to fill, we're going to use the fill bucket, and we're going to set this to layer as well uh, instead of canvas. And then uh, I guess I'll make it like a like an orange, like that. And then we can deselect that. So what we're going to do now that we kind of have the like the area that we want to color like inside of the lines, we go back to layers. And what we want to do is go to protect alpha. Protect alpha means that whatever that layer has on it, uh, alpha is basically the transparency on the layer. So if you look at these layers, you see like outside of the orange, the white space, um, you can assume that the white space is transparent, basically. So what it does is, the alpha is the transparent area, so it protects the transparency of that of what the layer already has, and you can just easily turn that off and on as you want to um, adjust, you know, anything on that layer. But because we have colors on this, we can go ahead and draw any markings that we want. And I'm going to actually change this back from layer mode to canvas mode, which means it's going to read both of this colored line and the black lines from the other layer. And I'm just going to fill a few things in here. All right. So, oh. I'm missing a few things. All right, so I got what I want to fill in. And I'm going to make choose another purple color again, a nice light purple. And I'm going to layer above it. So what, what what's going to happen here is what I want to do is I'm going to draw in like the areas of shading that I want. And that's not what, quite what I want. Uh, it's a bit sloppy, so I'm just going to kind of draw the general idea. As you can see here, these lines are going outside of the black lines, and the best way we can fix that is, because this is going to be the shading layer, we're going to set this layer 3 to clipping, which means that it basically attaches itself to the layer below it. So, as you can see, now that we set the layer to clipping, all the lines that were going outside of the black lines have disappeared because it only wants to attach to the layer that's affected below it. So now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and fill this in a little. Uh, Okay, it's not showing, okay, it's showing right here, as you can see, there's like these little lines. So this is why I had like um, the expand tool earlier for the magic wand. That's basically what happened. So what, what I'm going to do is go to expand, and I'm going to set it to about three pixels. And so when I fill this in, it might get a little bit messy in some areas, but it should get rid of that halo effect. 
see how clean that is. And then, so this purple looks a little funky. So what we're going to do on this clipping layer here is we're going to go to under where it says opacity, we're going to the blending normal and pressing edit. So I'm not going to explain what all these mo modes mean because I don't know myself, but what I like to do is just scroll through all of them until I get something I like. So that's multiply, add, divide, overlay, darken, uh, hard light, color, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to multiply instead and set that. If you feel like the color is a little bit too harsh, you can always just, like even if with multiply, you can always just turn down the opacity a little bit and make it a little softer. So the only, the only reason I had this other lay up here was to show off, like, you know, the point I made earlier is that whatever is on the topmost layer shows on the top. So I'm going to draw little highlights here. And, oh, right, if you want to save your canvas, you press these double lines, press save, and that it saves it to your personal gallery. But if you want to save it so that you can share it with your friends, what you actually want to do is go to export PNG slash JPG, and you press that. Alrighty, thanks for watching.